1924, Raymond Dart made a magnificent discovery in a South African limestone quarry, located in a small town called Tong. A skull belonging to Australopithecus afrinensis was discovered, and named the Tong Child. Scientists researching the skull concluded that it belonged to a child between the ages of three and four. They knew this because the child's first molars had only just began to erupt through the gum and become visible as teeth, indicating that the fossilised jaw belongs to a child. What makes the Tong child so special is that it's the first bit of evidence that early man walked upright to. The evidence was the position of the Tong child's form and magnum, or the hole through which the spinal cord connects with the brain. This spinal cord hole is positioned towards the front of the Tong child's skull, a characteristic associated with bipedal locomotion. This bipedal adaptation allows the head to balance atop of the neck. When we look at quadrupedal apes, their form and magnum is pushed towards the back of the head to keep their eyes facing forward and not down when they are moving. Another fascinating thing about the Tong child is that it shows a glimpse of the hardships of life for early humans. It shows us this in the form of puncture marks that were found at the bottom of the child's eye sockets. These marks resemble those made by a modern eagle's sharp talons and beak when they attack monkeys in Africa today. Other evidence for the eagle kill hypothesis include the presence of eagle shells at the site and an unusual mixture of animal bones found alongside the Tong child's skull. Most of the bones found are from small animals, including hyrax, rodents, tortoises, lizards, crabs, small antelopes, and small baboons, which is uncommon compared with animal bones at other early human sites. Many of these small animal bones also have damage resembling that made by modern birds of prey. Human babies are extremely vulnerable compared to other animals. For example, by three years old, a buck is already fully grown. Fawns are also able to run after only five days of being born. Human babies can only just about walk between 8 and 18 months, highlighting the hardships and dangers our ancestors went through when raising young. The Tong site was destroyed by miners before paleontologists and geologists could determine its exact age, but animal fossils found with the skull are consistent with an age of 2.3 to 2.8 million years. SK-54 A fossilised cranium of a juvenile Paranthropus robustus, discovered at Swartzcrans in 1949 by Robert Broom and John Robinson. It dates from 1.3 to 1.8 million years ago. What makes SK-54 unique is that there are two distinct puncture marks located at the top of the skull, which are 33 millimetres apart from each other. It is likely that the carnivore which could have possibly caused the puncture is Panthera pardus, which is the modern leopard. Scientists think that a leopard was the cause of these puncture marks because a lower jaw of Panthera pardus, labelled SK349, was discovered in the same deposits where SK54 was discovered. The spacing of the puncture marks on SK54 matches the spacing of the lower canines of SK349. The damage to the skull of Paranthropus robustus could have been caused when the leopard picked up the head of the juvenile it killed and dragged it to a feeding place. The lower canines of the leopard appear to have punctured the parietals, while the upper canines pierced through the hominid's face. It's not clear how SK-54 was killed. We don't know if the child was perhaps lost or abandoned, but it does further highlight how vulnerable human children are and brings into perspective the dangers for a young hominid in the savannas of Africa more than one million years ago. In the early 1960s, a Homo habilis foot was discovered in Tanzania, dating to roughly 1.7 million years ago. OH8 is the most complete Homo habilis foot ever discovered. The bones are very similar to those of modern humans and demonstrate that the hominid was bipedal. But what's amazing about this foot is that the surface of the bone shows incisive markings, which patterns, form and size indicate that they were probably left by a small crocodile. Perhaps the hominin escaped the crocodile with severe injuries, or maybe the crocodile caught the hominin on the foot while he was drinking and dragged it into the river or lake. OH35, which is a Homo habilis leg bone, is thought to be from the same individual as OH8. Scientists don't know the age of the owner of OH8, 
Crocodiles are known to attack both adult and young humans in today's world, so that doesn't exactly help us when determining the correct age. Also, without the phalanges of the foot, it is hard to determine the exact age. Although some scientists suspect that a juvenile mandible, OH7, found 5 metres away from OH8 and within the same layer, may belong to the same individual. What is evident is that humans have never physically been the top predator. When our technology is stripped from us, we become an easy target for predators, especially our children. From birds of prey snatching toddlers, to leopards ambushing children, it is evident that some predators were never scared of us. Even today, with our guns, chemicals and ability to control fire, some predators will still choose to hunt and eat humans. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy and want to see more, then don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.